Hi everybody, my name is Matt Hernandez. I am a photographer from Paducah, Kentucky, and this is my short tutorial on how I use Nick Color Effects Pro 4 and the Nick Collection to finish off a lot of my composite images. So most of you probably know this, but in case you didn't, Google announced last week that they've combined all of the Nick all the Nick plugins into one suite called the Google Nick Collection. It's available for $150, which is a pretty pretty awesome price considering Color Effects Pro used to be $200 by itself. These are all very powerful programs. They're all together now, so you get them all in one. You can go to nicksoftware.com to learn more about that. So, um, I have a, a three-part series on my YouTube page about my entire composite process. I'm not going to go through a lot of that stuff right now. I'm just going to show you how I use these filters to finish off the blending process. So, at this point in Photoshop, I've got the background, I've got the player cut out, I've got all my adjustment layers and blending that I'm going to do in Photoshop pretty much done and now I'm ready to, to add a plug-in to kind of finish off this image. So I've got everything in my groups over here nice and organized and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift option command E. I'm going to make sure I'm on the top group and what that's going to do is it's going to merge everything visible into one layer on top. And then I've got my dialog box here for Nick for uh, the Google Nick collection. I'm going to go down to Color Effects Pro 4. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to run run the program here. Now, one of the great things about version four of this of this filter set is that you can stack the filters on top of each other. In previous versions, you had to do one, save it back into Photoshop and then go back into the filter again so it was could, have, could be kind of a lengthy process but now they've got it to where you can stack them on top of each other adjust the opacity so you can you can modify them and then you can save them as recipes so you can just with one click you can apply the same effect to different photos without having to go through the whole process again so I'm going to show you the custom recipe that I've created and be using not only on all my composite images, but also on most of my sports images. And it, it's been working pretty much globally for all of them. You may have to do some fine tuning, but as, as a basic rule, it's, it's been pretty good. So the first thing that I do, all right, when you go in here, you're going to go to your filter list on the left over here. I go to Pro Contrast. Now, I, I've, I've got kind of a basic place that I start on everything. I usually up the dynamic contrast to 40. I've played with this a lot. And it's easy to go too far with this stuff, so you want to make sure that you don't don't too much use too much of a heavy hand. I use dynamic contrast to go to about 40%, correct contrast to 20, and correct color cast to about 20. So I'm going to click the compare button up here, kind of in the middle left top. So that's before, that's after. So it's brightening up the areas that need to be brightened a little bit, adding some contrast without blowing out the highlights and making the shadows too dark, which if you if you move this stuff too far to the right, see that that color looks a little bit weird. I, I want kind of that red tone to this. I've kind of created a color cast in Photoshop, so I don't want to lose that too much. So I'm going to leave that about 20%. The correct contrast, see what happens if you go too far. It just kind of kind of grunges it up way too much. It looks kind of kind of gross there. Um, then dynamic contrast is going to adjust the brightness of everything. Everything was a little bit dark, and that, that tends to happen in Photoshop when you use a lot of blending modes and adjustment layers like I do in my composite. So start out the Pro Contrast. The next one I'm going to go to is Bleach Bypass and right over here. So you can click these little stars to the left of each filter, and it'll favorite it. And that way, when you're in Photoshop and you've got the dialog box pulled up, all your favorites are visible, and you can just go straight to them. So this is the default setting. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually... Let's go back here to Pro Contrast. I messed up there. I'm going to put this back to where I had it, 20, 20, 40. Okay, so to stack filters, you've got to hit the Add Filter button. I didn't do that the first time. So I've got my Pro Contrast. I'm going to hit Add Filter, go back up here to Bleach Bypass. Now, this is the default settings for it. This is obviously way too dark. I think it's a little bit too desaturated. I like the desaturated look for athlete photos, but you can go too far with it. So the brightness is at zero, which is probably what I want. I'm going to adjust the saturation slider here. And I'm going to go, it starts at negative 50. I'm going to go to negative 10. And then the contrast and local contrast, this is just adding way too much contrast. See all this density you've got here in these shadow areas? That's way too much. And it's even getting a little bit too bright here in the clouds and some of these highlights. So I'm going to slide these all the way to the left. 
And you can see the contrast, the minimum you can go is 20%. So I'm gonna click this off. There's before, and there's after. See, it's taking just a little bit of color out and a little bit more contrast. That's all I want here. I just want just a touch of that effect. I don't want too much. And, and you, can, you can up everything if you want to, then hit the control points button and adjust the opacity globally of these also. So if you wanted to go down a little bit in the opacity, you can move that to the left. But I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go with a little bit less and leave it at 100%. Okay, now I'm gonna hit add filter again. Now the next one, sometimes I leave, sometimes, or sometimes I use, sometimes I don't. If you feel like there's a little bit too much color taken out of it, I can add brilliance and warmth back in and set the warmth to about 10%. And that just adds just a little bit of warmth back into it, just if it's looking a little bit too, too desaturated. I like that look, but it, like I said, it can be too much. Now you can you can take it or leave it. That's just a very minor addition. I don't think it really matters on this one because I've already got some red tones going on in here, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Um, and then, okay, so hit add filter again. And then this last one is really probably my favorite one in here. It's the detail extractor. Now, that's way too light. So what I'm going to do is I leave the, the, the detail extractor at about 25%, which is the default. The contrast is, it, it's too bright right now. I want, I want a little bit more of a grungy feel, so I'm going to slide that to about 50% right there. Okay, that looks, that looks really good, I think. And I feel like my shadows are pretty good. I want this to be kind of a darker image, and I may open those up just a little bit. A little bit too much right there. Maybe open the highlights up a little bit. Right there, okay. Or not open them up. I'm gonna I'm gonna make them a little bit duller and then and then open up the shadows a little bit. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Those are the basic ones that I use in Nick. And I'm gonna hit the compare button up here. There's before and there's after. See how much detail and it added contrast, but it didn't add too much. And that's the key here is you don't want to blow out these highlights. You don't want them to be too bright. You don't want the shadows to be too dark. Now I do want this to be a darker image and I tend to like some dark areas in my sports photos. So some people don't, this may be too dark for you, but that's just kind of my taste. It's kind of what I like. So there's before and there's after. Now, this is just my recipe. You, you could add different things here, experiment. That's what I would suggest. I've, I've spent a lot of time in here going through a lot of these, figuring out what I like, what I don't like, what works for certain photos, what doesn't. But for the sports look, I think all of these are pretty pretty appropriate and stacked on top of each other. This, this recipe, like I said, has worked for a lot of my sports images. So once you do that, then you can go down here and click Save Recipe, and then you can name it. And then after you do, on your left here, you click on Recipes and go to Custom, and it's going to be right in there. And if you want to favorite it right there with that star, like I said, it'll pop up in your dialog box in Photoshop, your, your Nick collection dialog box in Photoshop. So, so I've already got this created and saved here. And then you're gonna hit okay. And it is gonna save this back into Photoshop. And sometimes when you stack all these on top of each other, it can take a, take a few minutes to get to a process there. Okay, now, I'm gonna, so what it did, we, we created a layer here with everything merged into one and then we went then we selected it and then we went into the into the filter. You can get rid of that original layer there because it created a duplicate. So it's already named ColorFix Pro 4. It's stacked on the top here. So I'm going to show you there's before and there's after. So you can really see all the detail that that added. Really added a, a little bit more of a grungy feel. You got a lot of detail in the jersey and the skin here, and I, I, I just feel like it really, really adds a lot to my sports images. So and then now the, the cool thing about this is now when you're done, since it's on its own separate layer, you can mask it. Well, first of all, you can adjust the opacity globally and take it down if you want to, or you can mask it by going to this mask button in the layers palette, go over here and select your brush. I'm gonna use the right bracket key to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna press X to make sure black is my foreground color. You can go in here. Oh, I've got my healing brush selected. Sorry, there you go. Okay, now I've got my brush selected. I usually drop my opacity to about thirty percent, and then you can go in here and you can paint away the effect. 
if you want to in certain areas like maybe his face and then you can press shift on the mask to turn it off and turn it back on so there's off there's on so you can adjust it as much as you as you feel like you need to I usually don't mess with that a whole lot because I feel like these filters don't typically affect these pictures in a negative way but if you feel like you need to drop the opacity or adjust certain parts of it you can after the fact you can also use the control points inside the program if you want to sometimes those can be a little sporadic though about the areas that they affect so I, I kind of feel I feel like since you're putting it on its own layer when you bring it back into Photoshop if you want to create a mask then you can go in and paint the areas out that you don't want so that's pretty much it um, I feel like this is really this has really added a lot to the image. It's created a, a little bit of a grungy feel, taking a little bit of color out and really enhanced the detail in it. And I might add a few more adjustment layers on top just to kind of finish it off. But I think that that's, that real, there's something about when you, when you've got a, an image blended in Photoshop and then you run it, then you merge it onto a layer like this and you run another filter on it and applies everything to that layer, all the, all the effects of that layer. I feel like it blends the image together a lot more. So. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Now one thing it did do here is it did kind of see, okay, that little highlight right there, I don't like that. That looks kind of yellowish and that can happen sometimes when you when you try to dull down some highlights in, in filters a lot of times that, that can happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush over here make sure black selected. I'm going to set my opacity to 100%. Then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I'm on the layer that we just created for the filter. I'm on the mask. And then with the black brush, I'm going to go in and paint the effect away in that area. Sometimes that yellow effect can come in. See, there's before and there's after. And it really, I don't know, it looks kind of weird. It's like it's trying to bring back detail, but there's not enough there because that area is blown out. So you got to be careful for little spots like that. But now that I've got that painted away, I think it looks pretty good. So, all right. Okay, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to my website, MattHernandezPhotography.com. I've got a blog on here that I try to update weekly. And then all my contact information is on there if anybody needs to get hold of me. All my social media icons also. I'm pretty active on Facebook and Google Plus and also my YouTube channel is on there too for other videos like this. So uh, that's it. Thanks for stopping by. I hope this tutorial was helpful for everybody and I will see you again next time.